It's uh, 4 p.m. Malaysia time right now, so I think we can start our session. Very good afternoon. Uh, good evening to everyone um, and welcome to this ProQuest webinar session. My name is Kurinji Muller and I'm the training and consulting partner with ProQuest. I'm currently based in uh, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. And I really hope everyone can hear me clearly. So if you can hear me clearly, can you just say yes in the chat box? Thank you. And if you have noticed, I have put some notes in the uh, chat panel uh, that, you know, the audio is set one way. So if you have any question, uh, you, you feel free to post it in the chat panel and I will address your question towards the end of the session. And I also have put in another notes that um, to share with me, what is your expectation of this, uh, this um, attending this webinar? Yeah? So can you just share it in the chat panel uh, and I will take a look at it later. So in this an uh, information age where we are overwhelmed with messages, media and data, Profess aims to help researchers to cut through the noises, to become more targeted, to be more informed and adapt to the changing in the research landscape. So whether it's teaching, learning or research, today's library users like you and me, we need barrier access, yeah, very, I'm sorry, very free access to wide variety of research materials from a single point of access or multiple point of access. So ProQuest aims to bringing it all together as a unified experience without restrictions of risk for research, teaching and learning by incorporating the scholarly journals, the ebooks, the dissertation and theses, news and magazines, video streaming across multiple disciplines in a unified and seamless interface. So in today's session, I will showcase how conducting research is made easy with ProQuest uh, platform, ProQuest One academic platform. And uh, also take note that um, not all your libraries will have access to ProQuest One, One academic. So you may have some or part of the products um, within that collection. Uh, so please consult your library team uh, for further details here. So with that, uh, our objective for today is to identify the varied source types that's available to the ProQuest One Academic and utilize the one search unified uh, to, to, uh, for a unified experience, basically, and also um, to understand uh, and apply the best practices to discover the relevant content. And finally, to evaluate, curate, organize, and share this information uh, to apply to your research, teaching and learning. Okay, very quickly going through the introduction. So ProQuest One Academic, or I might refer this as PQ1A in short, uh, I might use it interchangeably, is one of the largest and most diverse multidisciplinary collection that offers wide variety of content for teaching, learning and research from wide range of subjects here. Yeah? So what is ProQuest One Academic all about? So ProQuest One Academic, it, it's a combination of four major collections that you will have your content, uh, your platforms such as ProQuest Central, Academic Video Online, ProQuest Dissertation and Thesis Global, and Academic Complete in one platform, in one unified platform. So what do you find within the ProQuest Central? You have uh, content um, and that's uh, a complete, uh, most complete content, diverse content uh, and relevant multidisciplinary research collections uh, across uh, major areas uh, from business to health and medical to social sciences to arts and humanities, educations, uh, science and engineering, uh, and many more religions, political science and many more. Yeah, you can go. And what do you find within that collection? You find content such as scholarly journals, working papers, market reports, magazines, newspapers, and etc. And uh, academic video online, it's uh, it's kind of uh, uh, collections of streaming videos, which uh, it con which contains around seventy thousand titles and spanning. Um, the widest range of subjects across anthropologies, uh, business, counseling, film, health, history, music, and many more. 
And what is PROQUEST uh, dissertation and thesis? PQDT stands for PROQUEST dissertation and thesis global. And um, what is that? Yeah. So PROQUEST dissertation and thesis global is the largest digital collections of actual graduate works uh, with more than uh, over 4.7 million dissertation and thesis with 2.6 million in full tax. Uh, it's available through this collection, uh, through the PROQUEST one academic collections here. Yeah? And you can find the newest research and discover new findings. Also, you understand the connection between the research, how it had uh, evolved over the time and build it for the future as well. And academic complete, what is it all about? So academic complete is basically the collections of ebooks, yeah, the collections of ebooks with close to about 200 titles of ebooks within uh, the academic complete. Uh, collections, which is available through the ProQuest One Academic Platform. And it comes with uh, unlimited access, multi-users access, uh, digital right management, free chapter downloads, uh, and, uh, and some powerful annotation tools uh, to support your research, teaching, and learning. Okay. I always share the slide to many um, users of mine. The reason is uh, just to show you that uh, the, the, the finding shows, the survey finding shows that the use of a wide variety of content across teaching as well as uh, research. Yeah, Basically, that's the objective of this uh, slide. You can see uh, scholarly journals, just a minute, scholarly journals, books in print format, dissertation and thesis, in books in electronic format, conference papers are some of the top used content in, uh, in research. And uh, quite, the, quite the same for the teaching, inclusive of case studies, videos uh, in the collections as well. So now let's look at the faculty's view on how the varied content types uh, benefit students in their uh, assignments and research. Yeah? So faculty respondents basically believe that being exposed to a rich mix of content type, it promotes um, better learning outcome for students, helping them to build foundational knowledge and generate higher quality of work. So in summary, faculty believe that uh, having access to the varied content type is essential for student success. Okay. So looking at the uh, findings, the survey findings, uh, and we know that the academic uh, research is now changing, it concludes that access to wide variety, a variety of content, a wide range of uh, types of information is needed and required for students. So researchers and instructors to this, the purpose of it is to for researchers and instructors to produce more high quality of work. Uh, so having access to progress one academic will basically will meet, uh, meet uh, the current needs and the ones for the teaching and learning, yeah? the, the changing landscape of teaching and learning. So ProQuest aims to bring it all together as a unified experience where you can search uh, content such as journals, the scholarly journals, the ebooks, the videos, the dissertation, any many more other many other content within a, a one central destination without restriction for research, teaching, and learning. So let's move on with the um, with the uh, li the literature searching, yeah, there's some tips how to do a con how to conduct a literature searching within this collections, uh, within within the ProQuest platform, which is uh, mainly on ProQuest One Academic. So before we even we move on into to looking at the wide variety of content offered by the ProQuest One Academic, most importantly, I always emphasize this in almost all of my uh, training session that you your users or your, your you yourself you must know how where to get to access to these resources yeah so live in your library you have some you have uh, quite extensive resources so you must know how to get to your library uh, resources to get access to this so how to access it uh, what do i need yeah? do i need an id do i need an authentication access do i need uh, credentials all this information you need to know so the best part is to always to be in touch with your library team to know where to access to the content, how to access to the content, and what do I need to access to the content. This information, you must have it before. So one, only once you have those information, uh, you will now be able to explore 
the resources that you have within your library collection. So, for instance, if you have access to the Profess One Academic, then it's now worth of looking at what's the variety of content type that I have within this collection. And uh, then you will know, okay, I've now, my objective is to look for the dissertation and thesis. How do I apply the search strategies to find the right information? So that's the next step. Then finally, once you've got all the right information, you design information, then you will uh, look at evaluating those content, uh, organizing those information, organizing them. Either you save it into your local drive or you, you can put it into your research account, my research folder, that, which is inbuilt within this, in the system. Uh, on top of that, having uh, the citation management system or reference, uh, re uh, reference management system, sorry, reference management system, um, it's, it's, um, is uh, very crucial for those who are doing a very complex researches. So you can see how you can uh, import those in this information from progress platform to your uh, citation management system or to your reference management system. Yeah. So these are things that you need to know. How do I organize it? And of course, uh, these contents are available for sharing within your learning management system. So if you would like to share the content or the searches, you are able to sharing because all this information here, it comes with unique URLs, whether it's search or even the uh, the content, the, the document itself. So you can share it in your um, any communication tools or in your learning management tools. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do you have within this ProQuest 1 Academic? ProQuest 1 Academic is like we have seen, uh, we have talked about some of this content earlier, but you can see here very clearly you have uh, content such as scholarly journals, ebooks, current news, working papers, magazines and trade journals, companies and profiles, company profiles, uh, industry reports, market reports, case studies, dissertation and thesis, and streaming, and streaming videos. And why is this important? Because all this content they serve different purposes at, at the different stages of your research or different, uh, if you have a different objective of research, so it serves you in the different objectives, yeah? So whether it's assignment, whether it's your research, whether it's your dissertation and thesis, so some of this content serves you uh, at different uh, stages in your research. Um, not only that, it also helps you to develop uh, course materials or even if you want to revamp your course materials, you have access uh, in this platform as well. Okay. Now, the key scholarly journals that I have uh, just handpicked some of these uh, key scholarly journals from Profess One Academic uh, that come from some business um, related uh, scholarly journals, uh, health and medical related, psychology related, uh, computer science related, engineering related, and many more. Actually, there are many more. Just I just handpicked a few. So scholarly journals are also referred as a peer reviewed journals or sometimes as professional journals. So it's written by the experts and reviewed by the peers or uh, other experts in the field before it's published. So scholarly journals are often uh, recommended by faculty to use it in your in the research papers or in, in your research project. Yeah, yeah sorry, in your projects and in your project papers. Now, what is um, latest thinking first? So why do I say latest thinking first? Uh, because as you know that research papers, it takes a little bit longer time to be published as scholarly journals. It goes through a couple of reviews before it's being published. So if you need to have access to the in-depth analysis or research on those particular topics that's uh, not available in, in the scholarly journals, uh, you it is recommended to refer to an alternative uh, uh, reference such as dissertation and thesis, working papers, conference and proceeding papers, which are all available through this platform as well. Yeah? So having access to great literatures um, such as working papers or dissertation and thesis or conference papers, it helps researchers to include the latest thoughts or the opinion uh, or, or their findings in their research comparatively. Okay, essential magazines newspapers. Some of this uh, prominence uh, magazines and newspapers already available in your collection, especially this economies, uh, the Wall Street Journal, the so Financial Times, uh, it's available in full text. So you know that uh, as a researcher or as a, as an educator, you uh, or as even librarian, you need to uh, keep on top of the current news around the subject areas. So this will help you to um, to support those uh, objectives. Yeah. And um, yeah. This, the news content, the value of the news uh, in the research, um, the, the news 
the, the survey actually shows that over 70% of researchers use news content in the researching paper because these are in demand primary source materials. Yeah, it's not easy to uh, find in one place. And accessing to this news content or even those um, the wire feeds, it's, it's uh, really, really essential. The reason is because it keeps you, keeps yourself abreast with the current topics. You will see a different perspective from local as compared to the international level. So you are exposed to the global perspective. Yeah. And uh, additionally, if you, you also can find uh, deep sets of data information uh, reports, yeah, uh, it, like such as industry focus reports, country reports, risk reports, company reports that comes with the SWOT and financial analysis. Uh, it's all available in this platform. These are some of the uh, report um, publishers. The, the reports are published by this particular companies such as like BMI research, or it's now known as speech solution, blanket reports, global data, Oxford economics, and many more that you can see in the screen. And, um, and these reports are available, it's downloadable. It's so it, you, you can download it and uh, you know, you can either download and keep it into your local drive or even into your, into your uh, cloud saving options. On top of that, okay, so you do have access to some of these uh, teaching and learning uh, resources uh, like uh, case studies. Yeah, we talk about the Thunderbird case studies. Uh, these are stories um, that are used as teaching tools to show the application of a theory or the concept of a real situation. So, for example, you know, Thunderbird case studies are based on a complex uh, current global business scenarios um, where the real world, uh, the global management of very in occurs in the global management and it is initiate a deep analysis uh, for for a discussion to to look at the causes and the solution so it can be used as an applied material in in your teaching uh, to enhance the teaching uh, processes yeah now what else do you have within this collection we talked about the ebooks that you have in this collection the best part is to access to the ebooks. You, you you not only have access to the ebook uh, in the digital format, but you do not uh, compromise the ebook experience. Yeah, you do not compromise that. So it comes in an ebook original format. Where you you know ebooks are usually provides a broad overview of a topic with some critical analysis um, in a more broader perspective. And uh, this can be directly integrated to the learning management system as part of the reference or reading materials. And uh, this definitely having access to the ebooks will also, um, you know, before even you go into the in depth uh, analysis, you probably need to access to some ebooks to understand the holistic uh, concept of a, of a research topic they're working in. Okay, now video content. Okay. So videos, you know that now videos can uh, present uh, difficult topics in a new light and provide different way of understanding information and sharing those information to your peers or even to students. So on top of that, you know, videos inspires greater engagement in learning, further it enhances the critical thinking skills and expand their thinking capacity. So now we have discovered all that content that you can find, the type of content, yeah, the type of sources that you can find within this collection. And now I'm going to move on to look at the search strategies. Okay, this is the second part. I'm going to share a video that um, that uh, hold on a second uh, that will you know help you to quickly pick up on the on the, the searching skills. Yeah, hold on a second, yeah. Okay, this is actually a video. Uh, it's kind of an e-tutorial that actually takes you through how to apply some of the search techniques to find more um, refined uh, or more desired information. So you can, when you are free, you can have a quick look on that. But I'm going to take you through very quickly on this uh, research, uh, the search tips, uh, which is going to be second. So 
in because this is in uh, the research is done by ProQuest in within the ProQuest platform. So you need to apply some of the techniques that uh, ProQuest platform will be able to return you the right results. So in ProQuest platform, uh, when you enter, when you come to a ProQuest platform, you, if you're doing a research, usually your search terms are more than two words, then it actually recognizes as um, with, in between with the end in between. With the connector and in between, yeah, the, the operator and in between. So if your term is digital marketing, it actually will read it as digital and marketing. But if you know this is basically a phrase that I want to search, you just put in a quotation mark. The rest of it is very simple: the singular and plural nouns, the comparative superlative, superlative adjectives, or the spelling variances uh, of uh, English and British, um, sorry, US and British, uh, are automatically recognized. So you don't have to worry about it. Just these are just for sharing purposes. And uh, recall of this, um, this uh, the boolean operators and the proximity operators in your research class, if you have gone through some research classes. Uh, so you will know that how applying some of these operators will help you to find the more desired results or even to expand your search to find the right information here. Yeah? So in the boolean search that I would recommend looking at using the or more often, because more or is like expanding your search. Um, usually when before you come in your research process, in your writing processes, you will need to identify your key terms first before you start your search, right? So before you um, before you come here, you probably have your terms, uh, the, the terms map or however you call that, you probably have mapped it correctly with the right terms, such as the related terms, uh, with the scientific terms, with the technical terms, with the synonyms. Yeah, so you already have, you may not just rely on one particular term to find information. So by doing so, that you will now have to expand it by using all. Yeah, and uh, the near uh, proximity, proximity operators basically is a near slash a number. That means you are saying that I want two, the two keywords to fall within a certain proximity. So you can change the number, this number, to number 5, 10, 15, any numbers within 20, that is good. Uh, what you want basically is to want the two key terms to, to, to be in the closer proximity so that they will be in context. Yeah? Sometimes if you just uh, don't add it, it will be uh, probably not in context, but what you want is to look at the two terms to be in context. So that is proximity operator. And um, the next one, is the uh, asterisk. Asterisk is recommended to use in most of your search, uh, especially if you have, you know that these articles are written by thousands of authors uh, and how they have written in a different context. They might be written that into a different context. So if you want to uh, discover most of those uh, articles, it's always good to identify the root word, add an asterisk, and it will automatically look up for the other variances. Yeah? So these are the three uh, tips that you want to take uh, take note and uh, go through the the uh, video that I've shared with you the uh, the e e learning platform that will help you to learn the techniques easily. Okay, on top of that, ProQuest um, one academic or ProQuest platform generally built with the academic search fields. Yeah, it's built with academic uh, uh, the sorry the advanced search fields. So when you have the advanced search field, it's much more easier because if you are looking for a specific title of an article, then you just have to go into a document article and say, it, "Give me all the articles with climate change, for instance." Yeah, it's easier. Or if you know that um, the discussion of a certain topic is discussed at the abstract level. Then all that you do is um, I want to have all the articles that have discussed food at the abstract level. This is just an example. We can look at it uh, more in depth really, uh, later. Now, screenshots of a demo. I'm going to take you through a quick screenshots of those demos. Okay, so this is the simplified and open search uh, search page for Progress One Academic. Okay, here you go. If you start with the basic search, um, you have multiple ways to discover the content. One is through the basic search. So in basic search, like I say, if you want to look up for terms like digital transformation. So remember, ProQuest One Academic, it's a multidisciplinary uh, uh, platform. So whether your uh, content or your search terms come from health and medical business or computer science or engineering 
or any other subjects, uh, you will be able to find right, some documents um, that's coming from scholarly journals, books, videos, dissertation and theses, and the other contents are listed here as well. So, but in for today's purpose, we are looking at digital transformation as an example. So you can see I put in the quotation mark to make sure this comes as a phrase. So once you have searched it, you will see that I've got a huge number of results. The reason behind it, because this is a huge collection of uh, information that's coming from the uh, ProQuest Central platform, video collections, ebook central, ProQuest dissertation and thesis. Yeah, and it covers many other um, source types. See that source types. So the source types are from magazines, reports, books, scholarly journals, working papers, audios, and many more. If you scroll it down, actually, and also a recommendation of um, from the from the system to say, hey, you can look at this book on digital transformation, uh, transformation of enterprise architecture, or some other uh, digital revolution strategies uh, for accelerating business or something like that. So you can have a quick look uh, with, with the proposed um, or suggested content as well. Here's some of the sample of the news that you can have access to. These magazines from the economies. Um, here the book that you can access to. Now going into advanced search, this is what I was talking about. The advanced search, you have your search fields, for instance, if your search is from the um, either psychology or from the health uh, related searches. So for instance, uh, you are looking at mental health or mental illness. So you can see that I have put in quotation mark because I want this as a phrase and it can be either mental health or mental illness, or you can expand it and say it can be specifically to looking at uh, anxiety or depression uh, or mental wellness. You know, you just expand it because it can be uh, relevant to your research. And what I wanted to look here, look at here is these terms to appear at the title. And the discussion of it could be like on the education um, level or the literacy level at the abstract. Yeah, then I can move on and say, okay, the next thing I want to focus it to, to do a specific targeted segments in tertiary, higher education, graduate students, for instance. So I just use the connector or to expand it the abstract. Yeah. So here you go, some example. You see that now I'm oh, I'm I'm having a very um, Kind of targeted results coming from multi uh, display, uh, multi uh, multi format content, and I can then focus and looking at uh, re, um, you know uh, evaluating those content to see whether it's it's uh, matches my research topic, whether it supports my research topic, is whether it's something relevant to uh, to even to look at uh, to having a look at it. You know, you look you do a kind of evaluation, and here you go some examples sample of this uh, scholarly journals. So in advanced search, um, because this is again, you have multi-formatted content uh, from scholarly journals, dissertation and theses, from videos to reports to eBooks and et cetera. If you want to be looking at some specific content in the advanced search page, you have a source type where you can say, okay, I'm going to look at reports specifically because I know I have extensive high value report in this platform. So you can explore those reports. So you can see that some of the reports available in this platform, um, including of the country economic forecast, industry forecast, market reports, company snapshot, snapshots with the SWOT analysis and financial uh, analysis. Yeah. So there are many more reports here, but one quick way to explore it is through the advanced search um, by limiting it to, to the reports. And here you go, some of these reports um, available, which you can be can be downloaded and can be saved into the cloud saving options. Okay, now ebooks again, you have access to the ebooks. Uh, you can see it's unlimited access. Sorry, this uh, it's not very clear. Uh, it's unlimited access, and you can download the pages into a PDF format um, if you want to. You can uh, see the book details, then you have the downloadable pages, number of pages that you can download. Here you have about 216, where you can download those pages into a PDF and save it into your local drive or to your uh, cloud saving options. And on your left here, you are able to read online, download the books, add to the bookshelf, share this, share this book into your learning management system. You can do a quick citation if you want to. 
Now, this is read online. So in read online, you're able to do quick annotations such as highlights, uh, adding some notes, uh, bookmarking these pages, uh, which eventually you can share this with either your peers or to your students or to your even team members. Yeah? If you find the right information. Okay, now academic video online, the video content. How do you want to use this video content either to support your teaching, learning or your research? You know how to access to this is again come back to your source type, looking at the audio content and say if you're looking at all that energy relevant, uh, titled relevant um, videos, then it's just very simple Just search that. So you have some um, energy related searches uh, videos here where you can view those content easily uh, from this platform. Either you play it from here or you can just copy those um, the embed script there's a, there's a, there's a URL here and share this into your learning management system. And this can be used as a teaching material for, for the lecturers, or this can be used as a presentation materials for students who wants to present and having additional information as part of the presentation. Yeah. And uh, having access uh, quickly to go to the publication and test searches. So because you have an inbuilt publication search, you can quickly search for Harvard Business um, Review or our international review within this collection. And, uh, and not only that, but you can look for any subject. So if you are looking at uh, the, the uh, Journal of International uh, Business Ethics, or if you're looking at some other topics, yeah, the economies or the financial uh, times, or you're looking at the Wall Street journals, you can just uh, straight away go into your publication search and look for the right information. Okay, now Tessera search is useful. Like I said, you have lots of Tesseras inbuilt within this collection. So if you are looking for a specific thesaurus, like if you are looking for health and medical related terms, you can use the MASH. Or if you are looking at the education collections, you can use, use the Eric thesaurus. Or if you want to look at the general uh, thesaurus, you can use Profess uh, thesaurus as well. The reason is to make sure that you have covered the relevant topics, the related um, uh, the related topics or the related uh, um, terms yeah, in, in to, to ensure that you have covered all the related uh, terms. Now, finally, evaluating, sharing, and organizing. This is very easy, very straightforward. So once you have found this information, you have many options to, um, to obtain this information from this platform. It's through the, um, to the URL here. You can share this URL in your learning management system. If you want to download, you can download it, you can email it, you can print it, uh, even you can uh, save it into your cloud saving options. If you're working on an extensive research that if you have your own citation management system, uh, if you have RefWorks, then you can download it to RefWorks or Noodle Tools or EasyBib. But you have any other than other than this, you can um, download it into RISC file and import it into your any of your citation management system. Yeah, you can do you can do so. OK, so look up for those uh, references, the cited by information before you, you download those documents. Now, you have a research folder where you can save the documents that you want to evaluate further, or you can even save the searches. You can save all the searches here, save it, and you can rerun the searches. You can create an alert. You can share the link to your uh, team members. Yeah? So creating alerts, uh, it helps you to stay updated or stay abreast with the progress of your research topic uh, subsequently. Uh, let's say after you have conducted the research today, tomorrow you want to know uh, anything gets updated to the platform, you want to be updated. So just create uh, an alert to stay updated. Okay. So with that, I am uh, have come to close to uh, closer to um, ending the session. So you can see now you have identified a different type of content or source types available to profess one academic, utilize the one search for a unified experience, and apply the best practices to discover the relevant content. At the same time, you will know very quickly to evaluate, curate, organize, and share this information and manage this information. And now I will open this session for a Q&A session. Uh, I will also share this additional resources. Um, to, uh, once after I've completed the session, I will share this information in your emails uh, and you will receive an email from me with the presentation slide. Any question that you have?
Yes, I will share this uh, presentation slide later in the email. So not to worry, I understand the internet network is not stable. Any other question? You have? Please pre uh, feel free to post it in the chat panel. Okay, while you're thinking about questions, so this uh, session is um, it's kind of like a 30 minute session, but this session can be conducted in your um, your uh, your institution. So I can do it a private session for your institution. So if you would like to have a separate session for your institution, uh, you just have to email to training at profess.com so that I can organize a separate session. And uh, in that session, I will go into more live demo uh, giving more examples so that you you know you can see the uh, the depth of the content, the breadth of the content uh, that you have within your collection. So if you would like to uh, organize a private webinar session, please feel free to um, email to me at uh, training at profwest.com. Any questions so far? Yes, I will be sharing the recorded uh, session as well as the uh, slides in the email later. Yeah? And I have shared the post webinar link in this uh, in this chat panel so if you you can take like few few seconds of your time just to uh, send me the feedback if you have any feedback if you don't have any other question i think i can end the session for today and uh, i would like to thank everyone for you know attending the session thank you for your time i have one question hold on a second Okay, that's a good question. Um, the uh, the book that you download, um, it de it depends on the uh, setting that is enabled by your institution. One second, let me take you back to the slide. Okay, so in in your each time when you click on a book, you will come to a book detail page. Uh, just check on the uh, how long is this book is available to uh, download. When you download, how long is available to keep it um, in your uh, Adobe Digital Edition reader? Yeah, so you need to just check on that. So this number depends. Uh, it varies uh, across institutions. Some would like to keep twenty one days. Some might give for those books have limited um, copies. It might be lesser. So those with unlimited usually is default to 21, uh, but it's also can be uh, more than that. So you just have to check the number of days that's available to you. It is more like uh, your institution's process. Hope I have answered that question. Okay, so if uh, there's no other question, I think we can end our session. And again, thank you so much for attending the session um, and look forward to see you all in other sessions. Yeah, I have a couple of uh, sessions, so um, I think tomorrow and uh, next week as well. So look forward to see all of you there. Thank you and have a great day ahead.